So when we talked about lipids, we also talked about phospholipid bilayers that we saw in cells. And what we see is that these are semi-permeable membranes. We have all these phospholipids, we have carbohydrates, we have some proteins built in there, all these things in this cell membrane. And what it is is it allows kind of as a gatekeeper that allows some things to pass through but not others. And so we're going to take the same approach of why things flow through the cell walls and what's going on. Now part of the components of this cell membrane have to do with allowing things with certain properties to pass through. We're going to look primarily at dealing with solvent molecules passing through a semi-permeable membrane. So what we want to look at are three different things, and we're primarily going to be worried about osmosis, but I want to make sure everybody understands the dif difference in definitions between these three things. The first of which is diffusion. So if I take a substance and add it to a, a container of water or beaker, what I'm going to find is after some time, those molecules have started to spread out. And so we see they're spread out here until ultimately they're evenly distributed. So imagine we put a drop of food coloring in a beaker of water. What we're going to see is that initially all the color is going to be in one spot. And then we're going to start to see it kind of spread out. It'll get looks, appears lighter. And then finally, after some period of time, the whole solution will be the exact same color. Now a lot of times we can speed that along by mixing it, but even if I just let it sit there, it's still going to mix on its own. Those solute particles, the food coloring molecules, are going to be distributed evenly throughout the solution. And that's what's known as diffusion. So this up here is diffusion. Now what we want to look at is osmosis versus dialysis. So when we look at osmosis, what we see happening is that our solvent molecules are moving back and forth. In dialysis, we're talking about solute molecules moving back and forth. So when I have osmosis, I actually see the flow of solvent molecules, and I actually see differences in the change in volume here because I'm moving those solvent molecules. When I look at dialysis and I see solute molecules moving back and forth, I don't really see any change in volume simply because I'm moving particles which don't have a significant a significant effect on the volume of the solution. And so we see both of these things happening. It depends on the conditions. It depends on the properties of the semi-permeable membrane through which they can pass. But we're going to focus on this one here. We're focusing on osmosis. So osmosis occurs when water molecules, our solvent molecules, we're primarily worried about the aqueous phase, so we're looking at our water molecules, move through a semi-permeable membrane. So semi-permeable means some things can pass through and some things can't, from the solution of lower concentration to that of higher concentration. And this is what we're always going to see, from low to high. So what's happening is that I want to try to equalize the concentration. So as water molecules move, from the low concentration, which in this speaker we're looking at the left here, we've got low concentration to our higher concentration. As the water molecules move from left to right, we still see some going in both directions, but more going from left to right than from right to left. So water molecules, there's a net flow, and as a result, the volume on the right increases, and this is what we see happening over here. We have more on the right than we have on the left for our total volume of solution. And if the solution on the left is our low concentration, as we remove solvent molecules, we actually see a decrease in the, or an increase in the concentration on the left. So over here we have an increase in the concentration. And on the right we have a decrease in concentration because we've increased the number of solvent molecules. Now in this case it doesn't make quite sense to talk about an increase in concentration when we're dealing with pure water, but it is the lower concentration. It's never actually going to get to a point where they have the same concentration because, well, it can't ever get there because there are no solid molecule, solute molecules on the left, but it's going to try. And that's why those molecules are flowing from left to right. Always the solvent, never the solute molecules. So the same thing is happening in cells. If we are inside the cell and the cell inside the cell has a lower concentration than outside the cell does, then what we're going to see is the flow of water from inside the cell to outside the cell because we're trying to increase the concentration on the inside 
decrease the concentration on the outside so that the concentration in and outside of the cell are going to be the same. Now whether it can get there or not depends on what the concentrations are and other factors, but it's certainly going to try. So we have water molecules flowing from inside the cell to outside the cell. Now that's not always what happens. In this particular scenario, the, the liquid inside the cell had the lower concentration. It is also possible for the liquid outside the cell to have the lower concentration, and in that case we see just the opposite. We see water flowing into the cell. So where this becomes an issue is when we start looking at blood. We talked about looking at solutions of like sodium chloride solution if you're in the hospital and they're giving you a saline solution, you want to get something that's known as isotonic up here. And what that means is that it has the same osmotic pressure, has the same concentration of particles in that solution. So if we have an isotonic, you might also see this called isoosmotic, Okay, both terms are used. Isotonic is probably a little more commonly used, but sometimes we'll see isoosmotic. What we see is that the concentration of particles outside the cell and inside the cell are the same. So as fast as water molecules are going into the cell, water molecules are coming out of the cell. And this is what we want to have, because what we want to see is that water is flowing evenly in and out of the cell. If we look at a hypotonic solution, so hypo means low, so what we see is that we have a lower concentration solution outside of the cell. So when I look up here, the easiest way to look at this is actually, let's just look at this top row, what's not in parentheses here. So we have our hypotonic solution. It says the amount of solute outside the cell is lower. So we have low outside the cell. And inside the cell, it is higher concentration. So the solution that is holding this red blood cell has the lower concentration. And we know that water is going to flow from low concentration to high concentration. And so this water is flowing into the cell. Now, for a while, it's not a big deal. The cell can kind of take on some of that water, but eventually it's taken on so much water that it can no longer contain it. So just like a balloon that you put too much air in and it pops, the same thing happens with our water flowing into the red blood cell. And so we see red blood cells and we actually have this called hemolysis. So remember lysis means to break apart, hemo means heme or looking at red blood cells. So hemolysis is the bursting of these red blood cells. Now obviously if these red blood cells are bursting then they're not functioning the way that they should and so we can run into problems with that. Now we want to look at hypertonic and hypertonic means that we have a high concentration in the solution. So outside the cell is high, inside the cell is lower concentration. So now our water molecules are going from inside the cell to outside of the cell. So we have the flow of water molecules in the cell to outside the cell. And as a result, our red blood cell starts to shrink and they call this crenation. And so as we lose water from the red blood cells, they kind of shrivel up and as a result, again, these red blood cells are not functioning correctly. So this is why, when you're giving someone saline solution, why we need to give them something that is isotonic or isoosmotic, that has the same amount of particles. The identity of the particles don't have to be the same, only the concentration of the particles have to be the same. That's why we can give a patient, say, saline solution, because even though it doesn't have the same components as the bodily fluids, what we see is that it does have the same concentration as those fluids. So now let's look at an example here. A beaker has two 100 mL solutions divided by a semipermeable membrane. Okay. So we have our beaker, we have our semipermeable membrane here in the middle, and we're not going to worry about what it's made of, we just know that it's there, and we have 100 milliliters on each side, and one side, okay, we have one gram of sucrose, in 100 mils of solution. So this is our sucrose. And on the other side, we have one gram of glucose per 100 milliliters of solution.
Now this tells me the mass of these substances. It doesn't tell me about the concentration of these substances in terms of molarity. I want to find which one has the higher concentration and which one has the lower concentration. And so what I'm actually going to look at, I can actually calculate the molarity of these if I wanted to, but I don't actually need to. If I look at this, this is 342 grams per mole and my glucose is 180 grams per mole. So if I have something that has 342 grams per mole, what I'm looking at to find the moles of this is 1 over 342 versus 1 over 180. Now you say, well, I can't do that in my head. I can't figure out what it is. You don't have to figure out which one, what the value is. All you're trying to figure out is which one is higher. And what I see is that 1 divided by 180 is going to have a higher value than 1 divided by 342. If that seems is a little confusing, then think of it this way. What if I have a quarter cup of sugar versus a half a cup of sugar? The number on the denominator is smaller, but the fraction as a whole is larger. If I have a half a cup of sugar, that's more than a fourth a cup. So the same thing could be said here. We have 180 on the bottom, the smaller number, so the fraction when I have one over 180 is a larger number. And so what I'm going to see is that the glucose has the higher concentration. So this is our higher concentration. And this is the lower concentration. So the sucrose has a lower concentration. The glucose has a higher concentration. Now what we have to do is that we have the same question. Now we've got to figure out which way the water is going to flow. Remember that the water always flows from low concentration to high concentration because we are talking about osmosis and therefore we are talking about solvent molecules not looking at solute molecules. So we said that the glucose had the higher concentration, the sucrose has the lower concentration and so we go from sucrose to glucose. So our kidneys are actually doing dialysis all the time. Particles are diffusing out of the blood, these contaminants that are carried to the kidneys, and they're at high concentration, and they're just convert or moved into the urine that has a lower concentration of those particles. Now, if our kidneys are not functioning and this cleaning process isn't happening, then we have to undergo kidney dialysis. And so basically, we transport the blood out of the body through tubes. It goes through the dialysis machine. And basically, inside this solution, it is behaving just as our kidneys would. But instead of going from our kidneys into the urine, now it's going in from the tubing here, from our blood running through this dialysis tubing into this dialyzing solution and because of the nature of the tubing and the nature of the solution we see the flow of particles coming out of the blood and into this dialyzing solution. So when the blood goes back into the body the concentration of the particles is much lower and as a result we have our cleaned our blood. Depending on how good or bad your kidney function is if you're un undergoing dialysis will determine how many times a week you actually have to do this. So our primary concern is about osmosis, but I wanted to point out the differences between diffusion, which is the molecules spreading out, evenly distributing themselves through the solution, and dialysis, where we're looking at the flow of solute particles. Again, we're not worried about those here. We're worried more about osmosis, the flow of solvent molecules from low concentration to high concentration.